All right, we're going to be talking about uh, the digestive tract and how it works so you have a good understanding about colic. We're going to go through each part from the part where they eat all the way to the other end and then you can see how we can do stuff to help prevent them having colic. Something that's abnormal going on in the digestive tract. And when we're talking today, we're going to talk about oh, a 1,200 pound horse, like a 1,000 pound horse, and about five foot. Um, 15 hands tall and that's going to be when we're talking about measurements throughout that's what we're going to base this on. First with the teeth they need strong healthy teeth to chew their food because that's where the first digestion actually happens. They're chewing their food and it lets the digestive juices come in and start breaking it down right there. Well what happens is the horse often develop points on the outside of their molars. So during your vet exam, he'll check for sharp points there because when it goes, it starts roughing it up on the inside of the mouth and actually can cut the horse's mouth. And that's why he's dropping his feet. So if he's having problems chewing his food, then he's not really grinding it down so the digestive enzymes can go in and attack the plant cell wall. Your horse, by chewing, has three pairs of glands that produce saliva. Do you know in one day a horse can produce up to 10 gallons of saliva? That's 85 pounds of saliva a day. And what it does is mix with the feed to make a moist bolus so it can be easily swallowed. Whenever a horse swallows something and it goes down the esophagus and it's going to the stomach, there's a thing called the cardiac sphincter and that's a strong muscle. And the way it enters the stomach is an oblique angle and that keeps the, the stomach from throwing up. You know, once you eat something that just doesn't agree with you and you feel sick or maybe you gave the horse a little moldy hay or something, he'll pick through that and usually if they're out in the open pastures, he won't eat it. But if he's in a pen, he'll eat that. And whatever he eats has to go all the way through and out the other end because they can't throw up because of the strong muscle. And that could be a problem later on. That could also predispose him to colic. Another thing is the stomach. It's just four gallons. So it's a relatively small for the horse's size. Out in the natural with grazing all day, it can stay up into the stomach for 24 hours. And this is where the full digestion takes place. Though now we domesticated the horse and keep them in pens, we're just able to feed them twice a day those heavy meals. If you, whenever the stomach is over two thirds uh, full, it's gonna empty out whether full digestion has taken place or not. So if you feed them over two gallons, you're looking at it emptying out within 15 minutes sometimes. So the full digestion haven't broken down that food enough, so then it goes through really readily through the digestive tract. It's gonna start getting stopped in different ways, especially if he's ate a lot of dry stuff. What happens after it empties out, it's gonna go next into the small intestine. And there's a, a, a strong sphincter muscle called a pyloric valve, and that's what's gonna say how much is coming from the stomach into the small intestine. The small intestine is 50 to 70 feet in length and holds 10 to 12 gallons. This is the main absorption of all the carbohydrates that it takes and it, it takes it into the bloodstream and go to wherever the horse needs it, the nutrients in the body. What keeps going on through then is your roughages like your hay, your beet pulp. So it stays in the small intestines from 30 to 60 minutes and then it moves on. The next, where it goes into next, is called the cecum. A cecum is a large pouch, about four foot long, and where the small intestines bring it in, okay, and to where it goes out again, that's, uh, that also can lead to problems just because of the structure, how it's made. In this, it's kind of like a big microbial sack, and it stays in there from seven to eight hours, and it contains seven to eight gallons, and that's it's a microbial fermentation vat. Now these microbes are very specific and they create enzymes for that specific feed that you've been feeding. They're very slow to modify and slow to change. So if suddenly you make a rapid feed change like giving alfalfa and you'd been given like Timothy hay, they have to adapt to that. So they are not going to digest it as good as they should have. After the cecum it goes back up through and now we're going into the large colon. The large colon is 10 to 12 feet in length and holds 20 gallons. It's very large. And what it does is have many twists and turns and it keeps going through until the small colon. Now where it makes twists, it has uh, some twists. It's called the pelvic um, 
flexure and where it's actually a larger diameter twisting around and going to a smaller diameter. This is where most impaction cases happen. And the main job that people need to know of the colon is that it rehydrates the horse and it pulls all the moisture out of the feed that's left and uh, up the waste matter. And this is what makes your fecal balls. Now when you have an impaction and it's stopping there, the colon keeps doing its job. It keeps pulling out and pulling out till actually this substance is now adhering to the mucosal lining. Now how does say whoa actually work? What it does, as soon as the horse drinks it down, it's absorbed through the stomach lining right into the bloodstream. Very few things are absorbed through that heavy lining of the stomach, but it was designed especially to be absorbed right through the stomach lining into the bloodstream. And what it does, instead of making its way all the way to the impaction site, the blockage that's causing all the gas and everything to build up in the blockage, what it does is it tells the horse's body through the bloodstream through osmosis to put all that body fluids back into the colon. So not only is it coming back in, it's rehydrating the mucosal lining that and now that blockage is adhering to. And it goes in and supples that out and it penetrates the impaction. It floods it with the body fluids, the natural body fluids of the horse, breaking it down. It has an ionic solution and it's all natural. And that stimulates the muscles with peristalsis to help eliminate and move that on out of the horse's system. That is how Say Whoa works and goes in and actually solves the problem. Not just kills the plane, not just relaxes muscles, you need those muscles working to eliminate that colon impaction.